Hey, I'm Vicky and I'm going to be organising my kids' playroom. I'm going to be having a toy declutter, completely organise all of the toy storage here and just talk you through a few toy storage hacks that you may find really, really useful. What I'm going to do is work clockwise around the room, pulling baskets and boxes off of the units, getting everything out, picking the random miscellaneous stuff off the floor which I've found, some of which I'm not even sure exactly what it goes with. I know that's a pen, I know that goes with the pen, but I'm not quite sure which toy set this teeny tiny dragon goes with, but I'm sure we'll figure that out as we go. So I'm gonna have a miscellaneous pile with the stuff where I'm not sure that they go. I organise my kids' toys by category, so I have a box for their dressing up stuff, I have a box for their dolls, I have a box for Lego, I have a box for Sylvanian families. But some of the categories have got a bit higgledy-piggledy when it comes to their craft stuff, so I need to just go through that and make sure that's all clear. And it just means that when, it, when they come to play with something, they can find it really, really easily. So I'm gonna go through, make sure all the categories are in order. I know that some of these baskets are fine. I'm gonna transfer some of the smaller toys into better storage solutions for them. So I've got a few little boxes that may well come in handy for some of the smaller stuff. And as I said, it's just a case of working clockwise around the room, going through each basket at a time, making sure they're in order. I already know some of them are in order, so that should make the work a little bit easier. But I just wanna do things like group together some of the smaller toys in a much easier way for them to cope with. For example, they have quite a few of the Magic Mixies now. Some of them are in this room, some of them are in their bedroom. So I'm gonna try and group those together in one easy place. So. They're just easy to find when the kids want to play with them. So I've just moved the baskets that I'm trying to organise into the living room because it's getting really bright and hot in the conservatory and it's much easier here. So I've just got a couple of toy baskets that are basically have become a toy dumping ground. They're where the stuff that hasn't really been properly categorised or where I've just been in a rush when tidying up at the end of a busy day is where they've ended up. So I'm going to tip these out, try and categorise things. Any miscellaneous stuff is just going to go in one pile and anything I can get rid of, which you never know, there might be a few bits and pieces in here that I can get rid of, then I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> So going through this stuff right now, I am finding things where I just have no idea where it has come from. But the trouble is, you know that the second you throw it away, a few weeks down the line, you discover that it was actually actually integral to a particular toy. So I'm gonna make a particular pile for just random stuff where I have no idea which particular set it goes in. I'm gonna put it in a small box to one side in the playroom and then if any of that crops up in the next few weeks, then great, I know that it's set aside. And then maybe in a few months time, if it hasn't cropped up, then I can just go through and just ditch it all together. So what I've managed to do is categorize all the stuff in the randoms baskets. As you can see, I've had four baskets out in total. So there's been quite a lot of stuff to go through, but I found a few Lego bits. I found some My Little Ponies and some other horse stuff that I've put together. I found a LOL surprise ball, which other LOL surprise dolls are in a toy box upstairs. So I'm gonna move that upstairs. I found a random Sylvanian family's little cake. I found some bits from some games that need to go away. I found some stuff that goes with the dolls. And I found some really random stuff that doesn't really go anywhere. I've got remote control toys here and those are all gonna go in one place. And I think uh, the, the remote, uh, the walkie talkies, sorry, can go with that as well. And then other things. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Um, other things like the uh, Toy Story dinosaur, which like Bella doesn't really play with anymore, but I know the second that I put it away, she'll want it. So I'm gonna leave that in the miscellaneous stuff basket for now. And I am moving one of her toys, it's like a troll's castle, up into the loft because I haven't seen her play with it in such a long time. I'm sure she will ask for it at some point but it's in the loft, it's not taking up space there, but if she wants it, I can just easily get it back down again.
you should definitely try, and this has honestly been such a lifesaver for me, is you know how the boxes that you get games and puzzles in, just over time they get crushed, either the kids sit on them or the cardboard just doesn't last. If they're loved and used a lot, they just kind of stop working. So you can either use these sort of plastic, kind of really useful type storage boxes. Um, there are, I, I say, mentioned really useful there, but you know, you can find them pretty much everywhere. Ones that are really easy for kids to click open themselves, but they're not gonna break. So you can either use that, or I also like to use laundry bags, uh, which sounds kind of random. So these are the things that like you'd put socks in and stuff like that. But when you've got games with loads and loads of pieces, so I think this is a Jenga type game in here, and the box has gone, it's like, oh, where do I keep it? This is a really good way to keep it kind of small so it's not in a gigantic box and it's a bit more adaptable to different spaces so if you need to be able to stack the games then these are great because obviously get several boxes you can stack them all on top of each other or sit them next to each other and they look really super neat and then you can always label them as well so you know which game is in there i always keep the instructions in the box anyway um or these are another really really good option as you can see here a lot of our games and puzzles are kept in the footstool um, it's a, just a really, really handy place to keep them. And then I've also got a drawer in the TV unit. So I'm moving some of the puzzles that I found in the conservatory out into this storage area, um, just to free up a bit of shelf space in that room so it feels a bit less cluttered. <laughs> Now that I'm done organizing those storage boxes with the toys, I have got a spare storage box here. This is something I'm gonna use for quick tidy ups at the end of the day when I don't have time to put everything back in its right place. So I've sorted out the baskets in this unit, but what we've got here is just like some random Lego models. I don't wanna break them apart because I know that the kids are quite pleased with them. So what I might do is find some space either on the windowsill here just to, to to display them if I can, or I will find a um, shelf in their, bedroom, in their bedrooms so that they can have them up because they took time to make them and they're, they're pretty cool, they're pretty cute. out the arts and crafts section of the playroom so every single drawer has been sorted out we've got aqua beads in the top drawer then we've got stickers in that next drawer there just keeping all of those sheets together I've just found a straight bit of fabric that I've put into the sewing drawer at the bottom down there this is where bowls and cups that they typically use for painting goes and they've got a few craft kits they've got paint and paint brushes there They've got um, some air clay sets down there. And then here they've got sewing things and various other craft kits in these drawers. So as you can see, the girls have got all of their art supplies in this cart, which I've shown on this channel before. This one is from Hobbycraft. You can get a really, really similar one from Ikea as well. It's not too expensive and it's just really convenient because you can move it around the room wherever the kids need it. You can push it out to, um, out of the way for when they want to play with other stuff, when they're not doing arts and crafts. So at the top here, they have got all their pens. That's actually in a lift out pen organizer. So if they do want to do some arts and crafts stuff on the dining room table, I can just lift that out and they've got all their pens there. They've got some like uh, shape cutting things here. They've got some slime and putty here. They've got these beads, which sometimes they play with. They've got a bit of plasticine here and they've got stamps and stamp ink down here and a couple of bits of glue. So a lot of their craft supplies are here and the rest are in the drawers, but this is just the stuff that they use the most often. So it's just much more convenient to have it in this cart that can be pulled out right next to the table and chairs where they do most of their arts and crafts stuff. <laughs> Thank you. 
Just to talk you through these toy storage that I have here, this is an Ikea unit, quite a popular one, as are all the baskets in there. That's also an Ikea drawer unit there. All of the boxes on the top of that unit there are from Ikea too. That wicker basket is from Ikea and that cubed drawer unit is from Great Little Trading Company, as are the canvas storage boxes. For soft toys, I love using just these simple storage bins where you can just chuck the toys in. I get mine from Amazon. I'm all done with tidying up the playroom now. I've got things back to where they belong, so I've categorized stuff. I have actually managed to get rid of quite a few little bits and pieces that didn't match with any sets and old puzzle pieces for puzzles that we actually don't have anymore. I've now got an empty basket for where I can um, dump stuff if I'm in a hurry for tidying up. The craft things are now looking a lot better. Uh, just have to exclude, excuse all the uh, pots here, the kids are doing a little growing project at the moment. I think the one thing that I always struggle with is where to put the Sylvanian families. They are stackable, so they're fine on this windowsill and at least here the kids can get them out. But I think possibly at some stage, maybe what would be worth doing is putting maybe some shelves up on the walls on either side here and then we could put the Sylvanian families houses on there, which would leave the windowsills a bit clearer. But I'm glad that I have removed the blackboard, which was in that corner there because it was blocking a lot of the light and the view into the garden. It just looks a lot nicer. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for lots more from me. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.